Hello there. Um, it's that time of year again where it's time to get all the camping gear out ready for some more trips. So um, we thought we'd have a look at the trailer and have a look at our new tent whilst we're at it. Um, it's been a bit of a harsh winter. It needs a bit of maintenance doing to it. it needs a bit of work to the uh, to the trailer. Uh, but apart from sort of a little bit of mould, a little bit of dirt in places, let me just show you. It's kind of the dampness has got to it a bit there, and you can see. You can see at the bottom there as well. It's uh, formed a little bit of mould. But that can wash off, scrub off, that's not a real problem to me. The main thing is I want to test the electrics out to get all that working. I have had a few comments over the last sort of few months, um, personal messages sent to me, asking about a bit more about what I've got setup wise The last video I did wasn't all that detailed, I was actually on site at the time. So I thought I'd just have another review, quickly go around. Start off with, we've got two batches at the front. This is the cover that I normally just throw on top. Okay, and that's held down by these little bungee straps there. These batches are wired up in uh, in parallel to give me uh, extra extra power. They're 110 amps, 110 amp hour batteries. There's two of them wired up there. As you can see, these are the the cables I'm just using just to uh, to connect them together. Held on to this strap, one of these adjustable straps, onto a metal frame, which is welded on to part of the A-frame. That was done by a neighbour of mine. Works really, really well, had no problems. Um, this plastic sheet cover, this was originally part of just an ordinary cover you get for trailers. Um, just cut it down to size and I never go around to doing a proper cover. That just seemed to do the job nicely, so that holds on okay. Going inside, this is the charger control unit I'm using at the moment. It's not the best. Um, I got this from eBay. I think it was a UK site, I can't quite remember. Um, the make of it, well, it's a JUTA, however you want to pronounce that, a CMP24 solar regulator. It's, it seems to do okay. I haven't got much experience or much, uh, or much other kit to use to compare it to. So I don't know. You can go through various menu systems. You can have it so it will stop charging the battery at various different levels you want. This one's standard set, I think, at 13.4 volts. I think this one's... No, around about 14 volts, I think, it stops charging. Um, but you can alter that. Um, and you can have it so it constantly reads out the, the power output and everything else. So it's quite a good one. This little plug here... This is actually a, a little thermostat in there, and it needs the thermostat in because it monitors the temperature so it knows how the battery is um, behaving in different temperatures, so it knows what sort of charge to give it. So that's quite an important part. That just stays at the top, it doesn't cause any issues at all. Now, there's uh, the output on here. If you can look at this diagram, there you can see solar panel wires directly into there from the, uh, from the roof. The battery directly to these points, positive, negative, and then your output is supposed to be these two terminals there. That is a maximum of 10 amps. I use a bit more than 10 amps uh, from time to time with all my gear. So it, when you've got the, the load displayed on here, the load, 0.1 of an amp, um, that is because I've just got this little fridge plugged in. It's on standby, so it's not actually doing anything. Oh, and I've got a TVA or booster plugged in as well there. So it's not actually doing anything other than just powering a little bit of a booster up. Um, but the inverter, which I use here to give me my mains, that's a 600 watt uh, AC, a DC to AC inverter. Um, once that's turned on, that's wired directly to the battery because I didn't want um, that to be taking all my 10 amps up and then turning other things off. So that's directly to the battery. Other things like those sockets there, those 12 volt sockets, they are connected through there. And if I turn, let me just zoom out again, I could do this with a tripod really. If I turn this fridge on here, you can see how the load is now. The load has gone up to 4.4 amps, okay? So, um, that gives you a bit of a, an idea of what sort of power you're using. I can plug other things in there as well. 
Um, I've also got this other little portable one that doesn't normally come camping with us. That's just in here out of the way. I was trying it out the other day, which is why it's plugged in. Uh, and that's it really. This um, uh, this uh, inverter here wires directly to these double sockets here. Um, this socket is for the outside socket. This is just a little portable light. If I just turn that on. Just something I was trying with. There you go. So it's a low energy light bulb in there. Um, for when I go camping, the outside socket is here. There you go. So double socket, controlled from inside. Ideal when we go away. This bit of an afterthought. I could do a better job really, but that's for the TV aerial booster. This pole here that I've got that connects to uh, an aerial, TV aerial, which I can then plug straight into here. Then from the output, out of the booster, uh, extension lead, which goes to the tent for the television, computer, whatever I'm going to use it on. So that gives me the added boost, booster signal if I need it. The aerial that we use in the moment isn't a very good one. I can just show you this. That's it there. It sticks on the poles, which again are here. Um, and it gets um, about uh, 10 to 15 feet high, um, which is good enough for what we've used so far. We don't really watch much TV anyway, as you can imagine when you go camping, that's not the idea. But uh, when you've got poor nights and rain and cold, it's nice to catch up with the soaps. And that's it really. Um, not much more to say. That's the cable coming out of the solar panel down uh, straight in behind the toolbox there. And that's that. So uh, there you go. I've still not done a proper bracket yet. At the moment this lid, which is quite a hefty lid, is held open with that wood there. Uh, not ideal. Bear with me. I want to pop a bracket for that really. For the solar panel, 100 watts. Uh, oh, what a mess. There we go. And that bit of wood there. Again, it's something that I've just not got around to finishing yet. That just pops open the panel, points into the sun, and faces you, like so. Um, it's worked really, really well. I've, I've used it quite a few times now when I've been away. Um, batteries have never let me down yet they charge up nicely, it's always constantly on charge even whilst you're towing it it's, uh, it's still charging up um, I think you get about 6 amps on a nice sunny day so it's quite good, good bit of kit um, I do plan on putting um, another socket on the outside here which will enable me to plug into the mains uh, which will then charge up the batteries using the mains. Uh, so if you do go to a place with this hook up, I'll be able to charge it up using those, you know, using the mains. Alternatively, whilst you're driving, plug it into the uh, the auxiliary socket on the car uh, tow bar to charge the batteries up whilst you're, whilst you're driving. That'll be another idea. It's just getting around to it and just the time in the moment. So I shall do that at some point. Anyway, hope that's helped. Um, any more questions, please email me. And uh, when I go away next time, I hope to do uh, another video showing everything working and setting up and going into detail about the workings of it all. So, thanks very much for watching, and uh, catch you soon.